People who work for airlines, what are secrets passengers don't know? I am an aircraft fueler. One thing I cannot stress enough is how your pets are treated. While your airline will take the best possible actions, some things cannot be avoided, like the noise on the ramp. I cannot stand out there without ear protection, and imagine your pet sitting out there on the ramp waiting to be loaded onto the plane being exposed to the same amount of noise I am. Please people, think twice before flying your pets. Nice. Most comments make you learn things that are interesting but with no actual lesson. Your comment may save a few pets from that. Aerospace Fastener Production here. Nobody ever asks what is actually holding the plane together. Don't worry about it. Duct tape and good wishes. If you give us flight attendants your magazines, we will love you. When a plane is landing at night, they dim the interior lights in case you need to evacuate upon landing. Your eyes are already adjusted to the darkness so you'll be able to see better once outside the plane. I always thought it was so you'd fall asleep just as the ground violently comes up to meet you. Women, if you pack a toy in your bag, take the batteries out. Because if I'm loading your bag, and I hear it vibrating I have to tell my lead. Then my lead has to come pull you off the aircraft and you have to open your bag and turn off your toy in front of a bunch of giggling grown ass men. When you experience a hard landing in bad weather it wasn't because of a lack of pilot skills but it is in fact intentional. If the runway is covered in water the airplane has to touch down hard in order to puncture the water layer and prevent aquaplaning. Mobile electronic devices won't really bring an airplane down but they can be really annoying to pilots. Just imagine sitting in the flight deck descending to your destination and hearing the interference of a 100 plus cell phones picking up a signal. I have missed a clearance or two that way. The air you breathe on an airplane is actually compressed air taken from the engines. A large portion, 25% to 50%, is blown in the flight deck. The rest is for the passengers. The air leaves the airplane via a small hole in the back of the fuselage. The captain has almost limitless authority when the doors are closed. He is allowed to arrest people, write fines and even take the will of a dying passenger. At most airlines the only difference between the captain and the co-pilot is their rank. They divide the workload fairly and switch the roles of pilot flying and pilot non-flying each flight. The air inside the jet engine of an airplane is hotter than the melting point of any component of the engine. But thankfully due to amazing engineering the components themselves don't get to that temperature. My dad's been an airline pilot for almost 20 years, and apparently planes get struck by lightning all the time. Also if a passenger is causing a scene in the jetway he can refuse to let them on and take off without them. The tail rotor diameter of a Robinson A22 helicopter is 3 feet 6 inches. This is because that was as wide as Frank Robinson's kitchen oven would go, where he had to bake the first rotor. It hasn't been changed. Similarly, the longest wing on a standard commercial jet is limited by the radius of curvature of the tunnels the trains carrying said wings have to pass through in shipping. The 737-900, particularly. I was a ramp agent for Delta. A lot of freight gets shipped on commercial flights. One of these items were always called HR on the radios. HR was an abbreviation for human remains. Some people die far away from where they want to get buried. They're packed in wood framed boxes, so you would never know what was inside except by the strange shape of them. They were a bee to handle. People wait a bit. Add a casket and shipping container and you're looking at anywhere from 250-400 pounds. Also, the bin doors tend to be pretty narrow. Wrestling these things out of the plane was always a giant pain in the ass. HR in the middle bin of a mad dog. MD-90. Frick that. I used to be an aircraft mechanic. You'll be amazed at what you don't really need to make a plane fly. You are able to unlock airplane lavatories from the outside. There is usually a lock mechanism concealed behind the no smoking badge on the door. Just lift the flap up and slide the bolt to unlock. Now I can open the door on people pooping in a stall smaller than a phone booth while I'm surrounded by people. Thanks, guy. Some airlines don't pay pilots or flight attendants for flights that cancel. Which doesn't sound so bad until you start thinking about the safety implications of it. A little short on the rent this month? Then I don't see that hydraulic leak. I can't afford to have the flight cancel. 
Child needs to see the doctor. Maybe I don't report the torn up carpet that you might trip on in an evacuation. Because carpet takes too long to replace. So the flight would cancel. Not saying this happens all the time. Because most crews are true professionals and can put their job ahead of their paycheck. But it happens enough to give you the goosebumps. Throw in some seriously low pay. Sub 20k dollars a year for men of first year pilots. And you've got a subtle incentive to overlook safety issues. I have a friend who's a commercial pilot. Around 5 years ago he was doing a flight from LA to Tokyo when an anonymous caller phoned in a bomb threat while they were over the middle of the Pacific. Apparently they have procedures for this kind of thing. But there was nothing anyone could do in this situation except stay calm and not alert the passengers. Obviously. He said for the rest of the flight every bump of turbulence made his adrenaline spike. They took this case especially seriously because there was a group of foreign dignitaries sitting in the first class cabin. In situations like this, they radio back and everyone on board gets their name cross checked for links to terrorism and prior convictions. It comes back as a high level, medium or no threat. Source, friend's dad is a pilot. You can bring mini bottles of liquor through Tsar. If you want to save some dough but still booze a mile high, bring a few along. I miss the days of being able to bring handles of booze through security. Passenger weighing in, if you have a musical instrument never check IT, take it to the gate with you. If they don't have room on the plane they can gate check it and put it on last. When you deboard on your next stop it will be waiting for you as soon as you exit the plane. P.S. I have never had a bad experience doing this. Every flight attendant I've done this with has been more than accommodating. United breaks guitars. Aluminium, and like steel, doesn't have a lower stress limit for fatigue cracking. In layman's terms this means that whenever you apply a load to it, it cracks. Planes are designed so that under normal loads the cracks are microscopic. But they'll always be there and they grow with repeated stress cycles that is. Every time the plane is flown the cracks grow. Maintenance crews are responsible for knowing where they are on each individual plane and tracking their growth. Source is my mechanical engineering professor from college days. Bring in an open bag of or box of chocolates for the flight crew. Especially long flights. They'll treat you like a king for the whole flight. My sister is a flight attendant. She says after she tells everyone to turn off all electronics, she goes to the back and pulls out her phone and starts texting. If you are a US citizen entering the US, add passport control, and you see that the line for foreigners is shorter than the one for US citizens, you can go through it. Source, I said hi to the security lady directing us. She suddenly became friendly and she told me so. Armrests, island window seat. Run your hand along the underside of the armrest, just shy of the joint you'll feel a button, push it, and it will lift up, adds a ton of room to the window seat and makes getting out of the aisle a hell of a lot easier. Airlines barely make any money, on 40 billion of revenue less than 1 billion in profit, you may complain about ticket prices but not a lot of profit is being made. On some 747s, Air France and possibly others, the upper deck economy class seats have a little extra room, and storage, on the window seats, they have a tiny bit more legroom too if I recall correctly, Air France used to block these off for picking seats ahead of time unless you have a higher tier card, if you check in a bit early you can get them, it's so probably been mentioned but seatguru.com is the resource for checking seats for whatever steel you're flying on. I am a commercial aircraft fueler. At my airport we get a lot of small jets. CRJ 200 million 700,900. ERJ 145. 737s. MD 88. 95. DC 9. One of the main things as a fueler is having to overwing a plane. We do that when the single point on the plane is in up and have to pump 600-1000 gallons of jetter into the plane. This is when you see us, one on each side, take a small fuel pump, usually the ones you put in your car, and balance out the fuel on each side. It's a long process, usually 2 gallon sec. Fueling is labor intensive but nowhere near as bad as the ramp agents. I also was a ramp agent for United, and most any ramp agent will tell you. Don't buy expensive luggage. When your bag weighs 30 40 pounds and I have 50 100 bags coming to me at once, I can't treat yours with love and care that you would like. 
they usually want small jets out in 20 minutes. This includes scanning bags, downloading, dropping off, scanning new bags for departure and loading and pushing back. Another tidbit, if you are pushed back and sitting there it's because either your wheels up got pushed back or you're delayed. Pilots don't get paid when brakes are set. They get paid pilot pay when the brakes are released. You can only be pushed away and sitting there waiting to leave for 2 hours. After that you return to the gate and this way you can take care of business. Your flight will get delayed or cancelled if your coffee pot is broke or in up. Planes break. It sucks but respect it. The airlines care very much about safety. They will ground your plane for the smallest issue. I have seen a plane cancelled because the lathe toilet was clogged. But at the end of the day you should be thankful. First time poster but I love my job. And planes and decided to give some insight. Not airline secret but airport. You know that first class line of security? Yeah, that's an airline thing not sir. Economy passenger? Sir doesn't care. Step right up. Dang I hope this is true. Because I don't want to go into that line only to be turned away and have to do a walk of shame to join the proletariat in the line of underachievers. Flight attendant. Pilots don't fix the plane. They fly it. If it's major, they call maintenance. Stop asking the pilots to just fix the plane. Sometimes it takes a while. I'm sorry. It sucks. Deal with it. My day is long. So god dang long. Please be nice. I see hundreds of people in a day. If I'm abrupt with you in any way, I apologize. I'm trying to 1. Expedite the boarding process so we can leave on time 2. I'm running on very little sleep and I'm cranky 3. I've dealt with too many buttholes and or delays that day and my spirit is utterly crushed. You'll rarely see me upset, but many other fars are B. I am sorry, they don't love their job like I do. We only get paid when the main cabin door is closed. I make less than 20k a year. This is common. I know that you know how to put on a seat belt. I still have to do a safety demo. It's a liability issue. Don't treat me like a waitress. I'm not. I get paid less and my hours are longer, and the job involves much more than serving you a drink and some peanuts. I personally don't care if you use your electronic devices. However, don't be talking on your phone during taxi. If I can't see your phone I don't care if you're playing Angry Birds. We're not going to crash. Many airlines have changed their rules but mine has not and I have to enforce the rules. People vent their frustrations about flying to me. It's hard being bitched at knowing you caused none of the problems. Believe me, it's in our best interest to keep you happy. Why would we want otherwise? The FAA makes the rules, not your flight crew. We're just the crew. Every decision comes from above. Remember that. Be nice. You have been visited by the donkey of good jokes comment I'm not a clown but I make good jokes, so they always laugh at your jokes. You have been visited by the donkey of good jokes comment I'm not a clown but I make good jokes, so they always laugh at your jokes.